show you these. There's the one. And there's the other. Let's get a shot like that. I'm having trouble with my camera centering. My monitor's not working. So those are the two. was I'd water it and the water would wick back up. I really want this soaked so that I can peel the roots off. I've decided to take the Vanda and mount it to this one and use the black one for the dendrobium. So, let's see. I don't know which side facing forward. Just pull this thing out. The roots are dark, but they're quite firm have it sitting kind of like that. Maybe it would be better like that. What do you think? Then this could go through here maybe? No, I don't think it'll fit through there. I am going to try to work it through. It's been soaked so it should be fairly malleable. I'm going to try and tuck it through that long one there. I'll try to tuck that root through too. Hope it doesn't mind. I don't think I'm in danger of snapping them off. They're not putting too much pressure here. Well, you know what? That's going to be good enough. And I'll take a bark chip and kind of... No, I won't. I'll take some... Can you tell that I don't really know what I'm doing here? and maybe a little bit more here and a little more around here because this will all dry out every day and does it want a bark chip you think? I don't know a little bit more down here keep that part of the root moist now is it stable? It actually seems to be fairly stable as it is. Maybe not that big a piece. Maybe a smaller piece. On the edge in kind of there. And that might help to keep it stable. We'll take a little more of the moss and tuck it around the top here. I think Yeah, I'll go get some fishing line. Or maybe this cotton string. Well, cotton yarn. So let's uh, hold this one and wrap it around the back. Make sure it's under the leaf. And I'll tie that. Probably should tie it down at one end, shouldn't I? Yeah. Yeah, I know I'm slow. How tight do I want it? I think snug, but not super tight. Turn this towards the light so that maybe you can see what I'm doing. And I'll bring these two pieces back around to the front. Maybe I'll tie them here too. What the heck? And just for now, I think I'm gonna bring this up just to keep it from falling forward.
I'm not able to tie it very tight, so I don't think it's going to do any harm. Yeah, I mean, it'll wobble a little, but I think that's okay. I guess I'll loop the rest of this around here, just in case I decide I need it later. There's my Vanda mounted. This is nice and moist. And there are plenty of places for the roots to grow. So we'll see how much it likes its new home. I think of it as Vanda, like that's its name, and of this one as a she. So let's see if the Dendrobium is ready for its new home. I've wiped off the scissors with rubbing alcohol. Let's take the Dendrobium out, and it's time to unmount this. All right, I'm committed now. So my first question is, does this cling to the mount? Yes, it will cling to the mount, even when there's no fishing line holding it on. Let's see, how do we get it to let go? I don't want to hurt these roots. Let's see. Okay. I think I'm going to need another tool when we sterilize the blade of this. It's a little bit dull, so I'm hoping I can just kind of wedge it under the roots and use it more as a wedge than a blade. to lift and I think I broke the root there. All right, I'm going to go get a toothpick. I got some toothpicks. Wiped them with rubbing alcohol. I really miss my monitor. I could have done a close-up and uh, really seen what I'm doing here. But my mid Length vision is not very good. Okay, I think the toothpick may be the best tool for the job. I'm gonna push it down, wedge it under, and lift up the root. I think that that is sphagnum moss. That's another root. Those are definitely roots. Oh, I hope it handles this treatment and doesn't hate me for the rough. That looks like sphagnum moss. That looks like root. Where's the other bit there? I don't know if you can see that. I feel like I should trim off the sphagnum moss, but I'm worried that I'm not always distinguishing it from roots properly. Yeah. Let's get that out of the way. That's better. I'm trying to sort of dig into the wood under the root. See if I can pry it up that way. Right, this is going to take forever, I think. I'm going to do this off camera. So I'm finding that I have to wedge the toothpick under the, lead, under the root and kind of wedge it up as I go, and as I was doing that, I found under this splinter there's some more roots. Does that show them? Alright, so I kept shoving the toothpick underneath and kind of wedging it up, and finally I got it loose. And that's what it looks like underneath. Only a little bit of root there. And that's what the back looks like. There are these little white spots here. There are little white spots sort of along here. So I want to get a good close look at them. I think just putting on pretty much like that. Maybe tucking it in to this little it here. This moss should help. These, these bits of uh, bark that are glued on ought to help. 
So, uh, that's how it's going to be, but let me clean off the back, see what I can do first. I decided to leave most of the sphagnum moss attached, because the roots seem really bound, and I don't, I don't really want to mess them up. Um, but I was seeing a little bit of white, like there. Uh, so I'm going to take some peroxide and a cotton swab and wipe off the backs and see if any place else needs. I looked around carefully. I didn't see any crawly things other than those little white spots. I didn't see anything else. I'm going to take a close look at the, the white spots that I see in here, but I think they may actually be part of the roots. I don't know. Uh, but I'll clean off the leaves a little more and then be back. Peroxide, cotton swab, leaf. There, there, there. Fresh cotton, fresh, fresh peroxide. I'll just wipe. I don't think you're supposed to wipe the backs of the leaves, but in this case, I think it's better safe than sorry. It'll dry quickly. I just don't know what's best. And yeah, I should have looked it up before doing this, but I didn't know I was going to run into this problem. Could have thought it through. I'm going to call that done. I'll take a close look over it, and then figure out how to mount it. Cut some lengths of string and put them in some peroxide. I'll go squeeze this out and use that to tie on rather than fishing line. I put this and soaked it a little bit more. Tried to loosen up the roots a little bit more. I'm wondering if I should pour peroxide over this. I don't know. I'm thinking no. Now I'm just going to kind of try to tuck those roots down into that a little bit. And it's a little bit lumpy back here. You know what? I'm going to snap that off. Make this a little bit flatter. One of the good things about polymer clay is it's soft. All right. I'm going to try to tuck these roots down into here. Maybe not those, maybe just those. Oh, there we go. That's better. We'll see what those roots do. And actually, you know, if they just grab on a little bit, I think that'll be pretty good. So I'll put that down. I thought about turning it upside down, but I don't think that's in the cards. I think I just want to put a string right around the belly here. And I'm going to tie it in front because I want gravity to help me. And yeah, that's not pretty, but it's not for very long, I don't think. Now well, one string's probably good enough. But well, let's do a second one just to about kind of under here and around here. Tie this one in back. Not really looking at my hands, so I can't see what they're doing. Yeah, I think I will. Yeah, I think I'll clip that string in front at least. Should I tuck it in here and try to let the roots? I'd like to tuck those in there. Too late. Yeah, I guess I'll clip that too. That's pretty secure. Okay, so I water this one by pouring the water in the top. And I water this one by, uh, I guess, kind of squeezing it in here. Okay, so I have my I have my two little, I have my two little plants, my two little orchids, all ready to go. I'll go put them in some light. It's the next morning. Um, this moss has dried out completely. I was thinking I had put too much on, but it seems okay. I have no idea if the moss behind 
the dendrobium is uh, completely dry yet, but uh, certainly the stuff that's touching the air is okay. Here's the little Vanda. This is the one that's supposed to take three more years before it. Take three more years before it has any flowers. The back is not very pretty. This moss has dried out completely. I was thinking I was going to have to take it off, uh, let the roots be bare or almost bare, just give them humidity. But I think it's okay. Oh, this is the this is the board my brother made for me. Here's the dendrobium. It's supposed to go into a winter dormancy. I'm hoping that it grows a little bit more, that the roots grow a little bit, so that uh, it clings to the stand before it goes into dormancy. It apparently needs, I watched a bunch of videos yesterday, it apparently needs some really cold weather, like 40 to 50 degrees at night. I don't know if I can give it that, There's my watering trough. There's no watering trough, just, uh, just a catch basin. 